This is the Steve Shriver Podcast, where entrepreneur, adventurer, and community activist Steve Shriver shares what he's learned on his journey so you can make it in business and make it good. The big topic for this episode, what is the triple bottom line? Mm. I really, 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 really try hard to put as much into the profit bucket as possible because the more I put in the profit bucket, the more I can put into the planet and the more I, you know, and the more I can put in the people bucket. We'll be right back. The Steve Shriver podcast is brought to you by Ecolips, the original organic lip balm. Use the promo code podcast 20 for 20% off your first order on ecolips.com. Ecolips, all natural organic lip balm. Deeply connected with nature, applying beneficial organic ingredients to better people's lives. A proud certified B Corp founded in 2003. Ecolips, spread the good. And spread the promo code PODCAST20 into that promo code box. It's good for 20% off your first order on Ecolips.com. Hey, 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 welcome to the Steve Shriver Podcast. So excited to be here. I am uh, with Joe Coffey, who is our producer and my friend and the guy that always sort of has the good questions on the show. Right on. Yeah. And we're in Cafe Grande Studios, which is amazing. And I can't ever pronounce it right. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Coffee Grande. Coffee Grande. And uh, yeah. you are Steve Shriver, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Thank you. Yes. And I, uh, I have experience in this business. I have the experience in the business of business. Yes. Uh, I uh, have bought, sold, and uh, failed, and uh, a lot of different businesses, over a dozen, and currently have five businesses in five different industries. And here on the Steve Shriver podcast, we are spreading the gospel of entrepreneurship to the entrepreneurial community, uh, people who want to start businesses, who are in business trying to grow. Uh, We want you know, we want you to be a part of what we're doing and we want to be a part of what you're doing uh, by uh, sharing our successes and failures uh, with you so that you can hopefully learn from my mistakes instead of your own. And if you're listening to the podcast, you should know there is a, a video version. It's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And you could find that on YouTube. And there is a website for the yeah. show as well on a Facebook Steve page. SteveShriverPodcast.com. And uh, the, the, in the, the Facebook page, uh, there's the Facebook page, just search for Steve Shriver podcast. The, uh, there's a, a discussion group, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. But you know, that's a second step, but even more valuable content there. Month, uh, weekly Q&A stuff going on there. And I don't know, we'll probably, you know, give away prizes and make it like kind of fun too. Heck yeah. So if you're listening and not watching, uh, Steve, tell everybody, Two things on the table here that are part of the oh, show. Yes. What, what should folks okay. know? Okay. Uh, for one, there's a hat that has topics in the hat, uh, topics for discussion. So we are going to pick a topic out of the hat. Uh, I like to keep it fresh. Yep. And although I like to plan my businesses, I don't necessarily like to plan what I'm going to talk about, especially on the show. And so uh, keep it fresh by picking a topic out of the hat. Yeah. And then the other thing is a, is a, a mallet that... Uh, that is made from derecho wood. We had a inland hurricane come through yep. Cedar Rapids. And uh, who made this? Uh, my dad did. That's yeah, amazing. He's a woodworker. Yeah. And so we've only used it once or twice, but it's like dropping the knowledge hammer, I think yes. is what we call that. Hammer of the truth wisdom. or something How, like that. Yeah. yeah. Hammer yeah. of truth. When, when hammer, there is a big truth to be told. Big moment. Grab the hammer. There might be one in this show. Ooh. So, all right, man, you ready for this? Let's do it. We're going to okay. pick a topic. And okay. people can get ha- topics in this hat. Oh, yeah. Uh, so send join us topic. on the Facebook page and yeah. send us uh, ideas. Yes. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? You ready for this? You ready for this? All right. What is the triple bottom line? Mm-hmm. Mm. That is uh, very popular these days in business. It is. I like this topic a lot. Uh, this is uh, okay. Cool. I'm ready. I'm ready. I dig it. I am. Uh, I'm loving this topic. So uh, let's start with let's start with uh, okay the triple bottom line. Um, what it is is people, planet, and profit. The three okay. P's. It's the three P's, right? And you could think of them as pillars. So with that, I guess let's take a step back and say, what, why would you want to run your business 
uh, using a triple bottom line. And here's the question I would like to ask is why not? Why not? Like, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you want to run your business? Why wouldn't you care about the people, care about the planet, and care about profitability? So somebody might say, well, it's a business. Profit, profit, profit. Yeah, there are people. Yeah, you know, let's not destroy the earth. But that that comes along the way on the side. We're going to focus on profit, profit, profit. What would you tell them? I would tell them... Uh, I don't talk to people like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I know a lot of your friends. I love your answer. That's true. You surround yourself uh, with people who are of a like mind. Yeah. You, like, what do I say to that? God. I mean, there's more to life than money, man. There's more to life than profit. And ultimately, um, you're gonna you're gonna make an impact. So, what I would probably do is is tell them that uh, you. What if I told you you would make more money, more profit by focusing on the people and the planet? You know, if you really make moves to support the people and the planet, you will make more money. Uh, Yvonne Chouinard, uh, he said it. He's like, every time we give, Yvonne Chouinard's the founder of Patagonia, one of my favorite brands of uh, out, outdoor clothing. And uh, he, he was like, the more money I give away, the more money we make. The That's more, amazing. Right. He just keeps giving it away, the more money you make. Uh, Ecolypse, as an example, when we, it's like when we became, you know, let's see, we, we were the first organic lip balm on the market in 2003. And then we, then we added our fair trade, uh, fair trade seal. Our sales went up. Uh, and so fair trade is trading fairly in the community, in the, uh, supply chain sales went up 15%. When we added, um, non-GMO testing, uh, non-GMO verified, our sales went up another 15%. When we added the leaping bunny sales go up another 15%, no animal test. So like the more good that we did, the more we sold. So these are differentiators from the customer perspective. If I'm at the shelf in high V and they've got all the different lip balm brands Mm -hmm. and I see Ecolips and all these other brands, you know, I think a lot of buyers, if they don't already know some things, they might look on the label. And if they see messaging about, this very topic, what this company does for the planet and what it yep. does for its people. I mean, these, these signals, I'm hearing you say that even by getting these certifications that communicates to Absolutely. buyers who want to buy from companies like that. And it ends up getting right profit. Right. So we are making more money because we are doing more good. So let's dive into this a little bit deeper, right? Yep. So, all right. So I've already, obviously, we've already determined that the right thing to do is to be a, to operate on a triple bottom line. Uh, I will say that, uh, and so the people planet and profit, uh, the B corporation is a third party designation. Uh, some States have it as a, available as an, uh, actual uh, type of entity mm-hmm. in, uh, I think there's 18 States where you can be a designated B corp, like just like an S corp C corp. That's cool. Yep. Um, there's a third, Iowa is not one of those. And w- there's a third party out in California um, called, uh, well, what, the B Labs, B Labs. Okay. And you can go online and go to the B Impact Assessment. And I'm not saying that you have to become a B Corp if you want to have a triple bottom line, um, but it is a great way to get the framework. So before we were a B Corp, we were just like, okay, we're going to do good. Let's do, let's, let's do more employee benefits. Let's do better for our community. Let's uh, do better for our suppliers. Let's do, you know, as much as we can, but we didn't really have the framework to grow on and the B, B, B impact assessment available online for free uh, allows you to plug in all your stuff for no cost. And you can see how you score and where you need to improve on and everything else. So that's great. What we like about it is it's framework for us to grow on. Mm-hmm. And so we get a score, but uh, yeah, so that's just, and, and I might, I might dip in and out of that with some, uh, some ideas here, but like in the, yeah, actually back up, let's start, let's just take on people, planet and profit. Okay. okay. And that's something that some people might just say, I can do that with just my mind in the right place as I lead this business. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, that's one way to flow and go, <laughs> yeah. but that's, you might as well find the metrics for these three things exactly, and plug it in. If you don't measure it, it's hard to improve it. Right. Yeah. And so, so when we're talking about people, um, we are talking about, uh, it, well, okay. Again, high level. It's like most 
businesses uh, focus solely on the shareholders, the shareholder, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, shareholder metrics, how, how happy they are, what their ROI is, all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so we look at all stakeholders instead of just shareholders who are stakeholders, stakeholders are anybody that your in that your business impacts. So employees, customers. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so let's just take employees first. Um, so employees we're talking about, so, you know, under the, under the, the pillar of people, um, you're talking about uh, employee benefits. We are talking about employee policies that give a lot of favor. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, wages, above average wages, living wages. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about um, above average benefits where we cover more of their insurance or all of their insurance. Talking about policies in place and putting money towards the betterment of the employees, 401k matching programs, that kind of stuff. You're talking about things that people want at the places where they work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about, um, for instance, uh, like, uh, oh yeah, the cost of turnover, right? When mm -hmm. people, you know, lose employees and you have to rehire and all that stuff. Like mm -hmm. we don't have that at Ecolips. We have a $15 minimum wage, minimum wage, starting wage. And we, and that's the, the basis for, for starting in our uh, packaging or production area. And then, you know, we have, it goes up from there. Uh, we, people generally don't quit. I mean, we have the, one of the lowest, uh, probably the lowest in Cedar Rapids for this size of company that we are. So, so you're saying that can offset this constant rehiring, retraining exactly. thing, even though you think, oh, I'm saving money, I'm not paying them enough. And then, yep. yeah, it makes sense. Yep. So in, in, in the B Corp assessment, we're talking about, we, we, you know, we measure, um, let's see here, you know, number of, let's see, lowest paid wage, percentage of employees who make a living wage, um, per, how, the percentage above the minimum wage, uh, um, let's see here, the percentage of employees who participate in employee ownership, retirement plans, uh, healthcare, health and wellness, worker safety practices, career development, uh, skill-based training participation. Um, just we're talking, this is, I'm just picking out random stuff from the list on the website, which is available to the public and number of paid days off, flexible scheduling, um, you know, uh, worker flexibility options. So the better you treat your employees, uh, the higher the score you get on the B Corp assessment. Question about the wage though. Yeah. What if a, what would you say to a business owner who says, yeah, that sounds great and everything, but if you start so high 15 mm -hmm. an hour, like, aren't they going to be expecting a raise after a year and the next year? And then you got to keep, you know, leveling right. that up. And if they stay forever, I mean, how do you avoid that? Well, one way to stop people from, uh, always asking for more stuff is, to start them out with a good amount of stuff, mm, right? Okay. And so there's that. If you're always starving them, they're gonna continue asking for more. Mm. The other thing is give them a great work culture and a great work environment and they will be happier. Uh, so it, it, it's, a, it's a different way to think about it. Um, but also, have you ever tried living on $15 an hour? Cause come on, man. Like, uh, I mean, yeah. it, you know, let's just be real. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty low wage to start with. And if you're paying your people less than that, it's likely that they are going to, um, you know, that they're needing other help or have another job or something like that. So you're in an area you're talking about just kind of, you're, you're a good person and you're talking about like, you know, you asked the question, have you ever tried to live off that? You're thinking about the livelihoods yeah. of employees. I, uh, I've been in bands with Ecolips employees uh, what is it about Ecolips and great musicians? Billy is an amazing <laughs> bass player. Jeremiah, like, right, you know, right. like ama anyway, great musicians work Thank in Ecolips. You. But anyway, um, I've heard their stories about mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, at Ecolips, we're different. You know, like if, if your mind is not in the moment and you just need to give yourself a time out, go away for an hour and clear your head mm -hmm. and do, you know, things like, like there are no employee policies like that at other companies. Right. Right. But right. they talk about 
that kind of stuff. Right. Like I, I see it all tied together with this notion that you were tapping into about just caring about employees and their livelihoods. Right. So without them, we are nothing. Right. So we, yeah, they are as important as, as essential to the business as anybody is. So it's like, I mean, uh, we need them. So you got to treat them well. And there's no better way to sleep at night as a, as a owner of a business than, than to know that you're treating your people pretty well. We do annual part of it too, is like we do annual, uh, uh, culture surveys. Okay. Uh, we just make sure that we get, take all the good and all the bad and go through it and make sure that, um, that we're maintaining or improving our culture or not, it's not going down. Yeah, um, and so yeah. when we get the real harsh, sometimes we get some harsh criticism. We, we really take a look at it. Give me more of these little, uh, different things that, you know, like those little stories, uh, you know, what happens at Ecolips that is employee focused Yeah, that yeah, this may not happen at the other places. Like I, I love these little things. Yeah. You guys do. Give me some more. Well, one thing is that we don't hire part-time workers. Um, we only hire full-time people because, uh, part-time workers are typically a way to take advantage of the employee, hmm. you know, give them less than 30 hours a week. You don't have to give them benefits, et cetera, et cetera. By hiring full-time employees, uh, we are obligated to give them, uh, benefits packages. Mm -hmm. Now I will say full transparency. We do hire temporary full-time workers. But at, if you are, and so we do that because we are a seasonal business. Yeah, ebbs and flows. Uh, and yeah, and so, and with the acquisition of Bug Soother, we can even that out because they were hiring temporary people in the summer. We were hiring them in the winter. Now we can hire more quality jobs uh, year round. Um, but if you're there for a certain period of time as a temporary full-time worker, we our policy is to hire you on. One of the things we do is blame the system, not the employee. So people are gonna make mistakes, yeah. okay? And we, we blame the system, not the employee, not the person or not the people that made the mistake. And by blaming the system, it already takes, takes out the emotion of it all. And we're like, okay, what happened in the process? Or because by blaming the system, then it's like my fault. It's the manager's fault. It, then it's, it's the, you know, it's the, huh. it's the company's fault. Yeah. And so if, and when somebody makes a mistake, we, we look at it, we address it, we try to fix it, but we also say, all right, what, how did that happen? And it also just gets out of this whole, you know, blame game, yeah. you know, weird huh. thing that happens. So blame the system, not the person. Okay. Helps. So that's a, that's a one. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, do, do financial planning with people. We have a expert come in and, and talk about financial planning. That's cool. um, trying to get people to be more, um, you know, more financially uh, sound. Um, Is there a description that might, you know, people are different, obviously, but, but is there a description that might kind of fit for when you talk about who's, who's the right kind of person to work at Ecolips yeah. or if they've been there for a while, like how do they roll? Is there a certain way to describe this vibe thing that, uh, I, I sense from people I know who work at Ecolypse? Yeah, I think, you know, if I think there are a lot of people out there searching for a job that, uh, has meaning. And it has, it feels like you're a part of something greater than just, uh, you know, a lip balm company or greater than just selling widgets. And I think that, um, pe there are a lot of people are looking for those jobs. And so if you are looking for something more and you also happen to care about the environment or the community and, and social causes, then it fits. What I've seen though, is when, once people start there, if they, if they're not thinking that way already, they kind of, you know, slowly start drinking the Kool-Aid and in a good way, it's kind of like, Oh, cool. This is actually, Oh, wow. I'm doing good. You know, it's like, you know, we're pushing organic, uh, products and, um, and doing good for the world. So it feels good. Oh, so you just made me think of something. So, um, I've worked for a big organic company. Uh, you mm -hmm. helped, you got me that job there at Frontier Co-op, uh, Simply Organic and Oracacious. So in the natural products world, you see a lot of um, people who are developing products with better ingredient decks mm -hmm. and thinking about the customers who want uh, certain benefits from good ingredients. And But there's this thing that happens where sometimes somebody may work at an organic company, 
And there's like this pressure, right? Do I mm-hmm. live my lifestyle like that? Am I a natural products person and I only eat organic and I would never go to McDonald's? And, and you know, like how much of an expectation is there at Ecolips, you know, uh, everything about the ingredients right. and being organic and, and, you know, you mentioned drinking the punch and sometimes after a while people work there long enough, they kind of right. get their themselves. Talk about this thing about believing in the product, which is kind of tied to a lifestyle, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And it's how, how I got into the game, you know, 25 years ago, I was, uh, you know, introduced to natural and organic products by Andrea. And I'm like, Oh, my, by my wife. And like, wow, this needs, this became our lifestyle. And that's the other part of it is if we don't attract people into that, um, or attract people because of that, then when, once they're in it, we, we do see, I mean, I've seen people shift over into the organic and it's not like we're, you know, throwing propaganda at people, making them, making them be a certain way. It's not a requirement for working there. Right. No, nope. But, but yeah, you probably see more, um, you know, refillable bottles popping around. I see more healthy food at lunch, you know, you see more, you know, uh, more of the good stuff. Okay. People, you, we, we, we only hit employees on the people and I, oh, I can okay. rattle it off. I yeah, can just yeah. rattle them off. Um, but like basically under, under the people. So again, we're talking about all, all stakeholders, not just shareholders, employees. We're talking about, um, the supply chain. So we're talking about how we treat our suppliers. Mm-hmm. We have things like a local supplier preference policy. Um, we have, and so that means if you have two suppliers that are offering the same thing or roughly the same thing at the same price, um, and one is closer, we have to give the, the job to the closer one. We have a underrepresented population preference policy where we have, um, again, two suppliers. And if there's one of, and if they have similar products, similar pricing, and one of them is from an underrepresented population, uh, then we would, uh, support them instead. So hmm. the supply chain is huge and that comes with our fair trade and all that stuff. So, and then the community, and this is us, you know, partially, this is why everything, you know, why I do speaking engagements for schools. Um, and we give to, you know, we give money to like the, um, the, uh, connect CR project and we give money away to the community because part of us being a good, you know, under that, that pillar of people is serving our community. So very cool. So yeah. Um, employees, community suppliers, and anybody that's impacted customers, customers right? Yeah. So customer satisfaction, making sure that we're taking care of them, um, guaranteeing the product, all that stuff falls in there. And customers are also the retail stores that sell your products, right? Absolutely. Right. So, you know, really in doing as good of job as we can to engage with them and make them, um, you know, uh, you know, add value to the, their, their operations and have them add value to ours. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So planet. Yes. People, planet, profit. So planet is, this is pretty easy for people to understand. I mean, we're talking, um, if you make a product, it's using ingredients that are sustainable, which would be like organic ingredients or fair trade, that kind of thing. Um, uh, if you're, most people use packaging of some sort, if you're using pack, packaging, you're talking about either using uh, something that might be a plant-based package or uh, recycled or make sure it's recyclable, um, working to minimize the waste. And so measuring your waste, uh, the, the waste in your packaging. Hang on, um, let me it, stop your okay. partner. Yeah. Packaging, recyclable stuff is more expensive. How that's weird, you, huh? Yeah. So how yeah. do you work that out? A lot of business people listening to this podcast are thinking, yeah, that'd be great, but I can't afford the really highly yeah. recycled. So yeah, you, I mean, you do what you can, you just do what you can okay. and, and like do as much as you can do to continue to, uh, you know, to, to move forward and to, you know, if, 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 if you switching to recycled material, all of a sudden you, you cuts all your profit margin and you're, you're done. You're now you're losing money because you switched to recycle. You probably took it too far too fast. Mm. Um, but there is something about sustainable products. It, it, first of all, it's possible that if you work hard enough, you could save money by recycling. You could, you know, by buying recycled goods, there are some things that aren't more expensive, but, um, you know, just do what you can. It's not all or all or nothing. I mean, you make it sound so simple. It, it, yeah, man. It's, do what you can. Just do what you can. Yeah. Um, 
So then you have like how you're, so whether it's alternative energy, if you run in on solar or wind or you're buying wind credits or solar credits, um, things that will help offset your energy bill with uh, sustainable energy, alternative energy that's out there. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just measuring. Yeah. Just measuring your waste um, and just really trying to, have the smallest impact on the planet as possible. So we all make an impact and it's kind of just saying, all right, where can I make moves to ha- to lessen my impact as a company? You don't have to, from the get go, get lead certified and do nope. massive things, do what you can. Nope, exactly. Um, and it, now I would say that, you know, you, if you go to the B lab and you get your, your, your score on your business, you can look in, there are, green building standards, facility improvements, uh, environmental management systems that you will get scored on. And it tells you, you know, it gives you again, that, that foundation and infrastructure to grow on, but you don't have to. And it's like, well, what can I do out of this list of things? Um, that would, you know, yeah, that would help people planet and then profit the big one. Yeah. So here's something that's interesting. Um, I didn't really get profit until 2016, like five years ago. What do you mean? I mean, I didn't uh, understand it and I didn't ever have it until like five years ago. Okay. Uh, I didn't under, so I was thinking I was running a sustainable business, uh, but I wasn't because I was all about, I was all about growing the top line of sales, getting more customers, getting more revenue and, uh, and just hoping and, and, you know, doing good, doing the right thing for the planet and the community. And I was just like, I mean, eventually the bottom line will take care of itself. The bottom line will just take care of itself and it'll profit will come with that growth. And, uh, it didn't until I worked at it. Um, it took me realizing that, uh, that, First of all, waking up and saying, okay, to be truly sustainable, I, I preach this all the time and I never really had anything for profit. I'm like, yeah, the, simply put, like you can't give money away until you make the money. You know, you can't mm-hmm. do good things unless you make money. And I, that would be my riff on profit. Yeah. Well, now I know that like, I really, 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 really try hard to put as much into the profit bucket as possible because the more I put in the profit bucket, the more I can put into the planet and the more I, you know, and the more I can put in the people bucket. Okay. So, um, what that means is that we're, I'm, you know, hyper about, you know, um, first of all, if we're going to hire somebody, you got to make sure that, you know, since we're hiring a high quality job, a high, high paid job, typically, uh, you, you know, we got to make sure it's that we're ready for that and that we're, we're, you know, we know it's going to have an impact on our profitability. But so it's not just like willy nilly hiring people and affecting my profit. Uh, it's when we're making a move with sustainable packaging, you know, we just launched this plant-based container, um, the plant pod. And it's like, we have to make sure that we're not going to take too much out of the profit bucket, but it's because we focused on profit for five years that we were able to launch the plant pod. Mm -hmm. So profit is something that people that are, you know, sort of typically environmentally minded, and they're environmental entrepreneurs, um, socially responsible people. They're there because they have big hearts and they want to make positive change. And profit is the last of their motives. Mm-hmm. And I just think we got to talk about it more and get it a little bit higher on the on the discussion. Is there something to be said about in the entrepreneurial world? You hear these uh, metaphors all the time about hunting versus farming. And in the startup, the excitement of the hunt, I know you love the chase and there's a certain part of that and beliefs about, well, profit will come just let's keep doing this right. right. And Mm -hmm. we all know so many stories about so many massive businesses that didn't make a profit for years. And then look at Netflix. Now they rule the world. What, what are your thoughts on this? uh, You know, in, in the, of the three P's when it comes to profit, how do you, you just mentioned, you know, uh, sustainable minded people, they're mm-hmm. already maybe not so good at profit. Right. So how do you focus on that? Right. And so plus we're, then we're accustomed to reading about these companies. Hey, they weren't profitable for you. Well, you're talking about this group that has, you know, that, you know, went public or has major, you know, investment dollars. Mm-hmm. Most entrepreneurs don't have that. 
And even if they did, they should spend it wisely and, and really focus on uh, this profit piece. And so making sure that your profit margin, your, your net margin is, is talked about right after you talk about your gross margin. It's like, you know, margins are everything. Um, and if you don't have enough in your gross margin, uh, it, it's not going to change itself. So what are you going to change about your business to make sure that you're putting more, bo- more to the bottom line? And you don't just want profit just for the sake of doing good with it either. You need profit so that if a derecho comes or uh, a COVID comes and you're shut down for a month, you need, you need, a, you need some backup, you know, mm-hmm. um, you have to accept the fact that uh, it's okay to make money and it's okay to have some, uh, you know, it, it, it's okay to uh, not give everything away. And it's okay to, to charge a fair price for your product. Like I'm all about fair, you know, so it's like charge a fair price, you know, don't overspend in the process and put money and, and, and treat people good and do whatever you can and then put some money to the bottom line. I think people who maybe have businesses that don't touch the natural products world or that kind of area of sustainable businesses, they may not be aware of this agreement that those customers have with their favorite brands, they will pay a little more right, because right. it's like, no, I want good ingredients. I organic non GMO. I will pay a little more right. and then I can trust it, feel better. It goes in and on my body. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a real thing. I mean, you don't want to abuse it, right. but that comes into play, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's the other thing. If you're authentically, you know, living this mission of, I'm thinking of our local long guy, Aaron, who, um, you know, eco mo and he's using electric, he's got solar on his truck and he's powering his stuff with electric and he's actually charging the same as everybody else because his expenses are less because he doesn't have gas, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, dude, I would pay you a 20% premium because you're doing it right. And you're the kind of company I want to be purchasing from. So I think you're right. I, I think there is a premium that you can charge without taking advantage of people. That being said, what we've realized at Ecolips is as we scale, we, we've bringing the cost down um, and, and we can share that with, with the customer, the end customer. So uh, where our lip balms used to average, you know, three, four, we, were, we had a lip balm for five ninety nine at one point, And now we're, you know, averaging two fifty to $3 and, and getting them in getting organic in the hands of more people for that. So, and, and, and even, making more money than we were when we were charging five or $6. So it's like, there's, you know, it's not, there's, it's not an exact, uh, like predictable equation or, um, path. But all I can say is back to that first comment we're talking about, the more you give away, uh, the, the, the more you get, um, the more good you do, the more support you get. You know, for all three of these P's at different times, you've mentioned some notion uh, a couple of times specifically of authenticity mm-hmm. and how in this triple bottom line thing that that's a part of it. I mean, so many businesses will even turn their head, look the other way if they can help make a profit. But I, I hear you keep coming back to this notion of authenticity within these yeah. three P's. So uh, there's, there's a thing called greenwashing that is in, in consumers are more aware of it now than they ever have been. But yeah. it's like, Cause right now, like everybody's environmentally friendly and everybody's socially responsible and everybody's doing good stuff, yeah. but that's not true. It's like they're, most of it is like their marketing department yeah. just got a hold of something that makes them look like they're doing good. Um, and it, in a lot of, even there are big companies that are actually doing good and they're just trying to keep up with the people like us who, you know, started before it was cool to, to be <laughs> yeah. doing good and be sustainable. And that's great too. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I think you do have to watch out for the people that, um, you know, that are really good at marketing it. And again, it's called sort of greenwashing is the old word for it. I don't know if there's another word for it these days, but you know, where you're trying to sound more sustainable than you are. And ultimately consumers are smarter now than they've ever been. There's more communication online. And so, um, Again, uh, if you are doing the, you know, if you're doing the right thing, it's a lot harder to, uh, you know, it's a lot harder to lose. You don't worry too much about when 
big companies start to pick up on some of the things you guys have done or even innovated. Yep. Um, and you've explained to me before, oh, well, I'll, I'll let you explain it. Like, uh, you know, why doesn't that bother you when you see some really big companies start to go sustainable and kind of get into this area yeah. that's kind of eco I mean, right. This is, I mean, okay. The reason I'm doing it is because I want to see positive change. And if my efforts caused a competitive, you know, uh, backlash or competitive spirit from a larger company to, to make changes so that they could keep up with us. And if we raise that bar to where the, the new status quo is that, yeah, recycling, recycled packaging, uh, you know, plant-based, uh, plastic or whatever it might be is the new norm. Then what's next? Everybody's running on solar and wind. And then what's next? All, you know, all the, everybody, all the employees are taken care of and what's next? Like, yeah, then we're utopia, man. <laughs> That's great. So bring it on. That's great. Yeah. Well, we are running out of time, so let's do a quick summary. Okay. All right. So tell me uh, how close I am. Okay. And and uh, calling back what you just talked about. Um, so when it comes to the three P's: people, planet, and profit. You very quickly mentioned B Corps as mm-hmm. a great go-to place to get the framework for how these things can be uh, measured, tracked and uh improved um so if we start with uh people you say that it's about the stakeholders not just the shareholders Mm -hmm. and i went way too long because i'm so curious about the (laughs) the ecolips employees because they're cool um but it's more than just employees it's supply chain it's community and it's customers Mm -hmm. and in those areas there are things to do to be a better steward and 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 business uh proprietor uh planet Ingredients, packaging, waste, and energy, do what you can. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that it's not about going straight to some massive certification. Uh, You can even err in doing the wrong thing, doing the right thing too much too soon. Yep. Okay. And then profit. My notes are terrible on this. I have focus on it. Yeah, (laughs) dude, because that's it. I mean, (laughs) just don't don't assume that it's going to take care of itself. Make it as important as anything else that you're doing. Uh, It never hurts. Uh, it never hurts to to make more money, especially if you're doing good things with it. And most companies do have shareholders too, in addition to the stakeholders. And then you're still taking care of the shareholders because they're a stakeholder too. So amen. Once again, the gospel of entrepreneurship brought to you by Steve Shriver podcast, Joe Coffey. Thank you so much. Uh, we have, let's see, follow us on Facebook, Steve Shriver podcast on Facebook. Um, We have a discussion group within that, which is pretty awesome. We're getting into some cool stuff and you can plant seeds for, uh, for what we are going to put in the hat for the next show. The topic hat. The topic hat. And, uh, what else? Uh, Uh, the website, you can listen to episodes right there. I know a lot of people are into the podcast thing and they know how to go to their favorite player and subscribe, but you can also just go to the website and what's the web address? Steve Shriver podcast.com. And just press play on yeah. this episode and others. It, YouTube, this is also in a video version. Yeah. Go to YouTube and watch it. All right. That's awesome. Enjoy our song. <laughs> Let's play the song. Uh. <laughs> the Steve Shriver Podcast is brought to you by Ecolips, the original lip balm. Use the promo code PODCAST20 for 20% off your first order at Ecolips.com. Keep up with the show at SteveShriverPodcast.com and the Steve Shriver Podcast on Facebook. 